By what Allah created, just the sky in and of itself, just the, the, the mountains, the earth, this creation, the creation itself is enough of a praise of Allah, in and of itself it declares Allah's perfection. Just observing it makes you think, if this is so beautiful, how is the one who made it? How, how incredible is the one who made it? In that sense. In another sense, so it's, it's bil wujud, by existence there's this be happening. By the, the grandeur of Allah's creation, the diversity of Allah's creation. On the other hand, every creation, in, in, uh, you know, inanimate objects, animals, insects, amoeba, cells, atoms, you know, subatomic particles, you name it, all of them have been given a language by which they can communicate the perfection of Allah. وَإِمِّنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُ لَا تَسْبِحَهُمْ is there, there is nothing in existence whatsoever that except that it continues to declare the perfection of Allah by doing His hamd. However, you, y'all, can't understand their tasbih. وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُ لَا تَسْبِحَهُمْ as beautiful that in, that in that ayah, Allah didn't say tasbihaha. He said tasbihahum. He's basically he made them animate, because hum is for the creatures that have intellect. Shay is should be ashya ha tasbihaha. He says tasbihahum because in that ayah they're doing something that the will akul should be doing. They're doing the hamd. So he says walakin la tafkahuna tasbihahum. Now. That is the, where the surah begins. Everything has been declaring the perfection of Allah in the skies and in the earth. وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ And He is the ultimate authority, the all-wise. Six ayat of the surah in the beginning are as though Muslims are being reintroduced to who God is. Just praise of Allah and you know, the grandeur of Allah, the greatness of Allah. Before we get into the subject matter of the weakness of Iman. Why? Because perhaps the weakness of your Iman and mine is directly related to the fact that we're not appreciating the greatness of Allah enough. Maybe before we address that problem, we should go straight into the solution. And the solution, the first solution offered in these surahs for the weakness of Iman is declaring Allah's perfection and observing the rest of the universe around us. That's the first solution. Going back to the basics. لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ To him alone belongs the dominion, the kingdom of the skies and the earth. يُحْيِي وَيُمِيدِ He gives life and he gives death. وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And he is in complete control over all things. وَهُوَ الْأَوَّلُ وَالْآخِرُ وَالظَّاهِرُ وَالْبَاطِنُ What I will highlight though, is usually when Allah mentions His names, He does not put a wa in between them. He doesn't say to us, هُوَ الرَّحِيمُ وَالْغَفُورُ He doesn't say that. He doesn't say, هُوَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَالْرَّحِيمُ He doesn't say that. But what does He say here? هُوَ الْأَوَّلُ وَالْآخِرُ وَالظَّاهِرُ وَالْبَاطِنُ This is unique. This is unique. And this is unique because these, all of these names are opposites. They're actually antonyms. He is the first and the last. He is before all was, and He will be after all is gone. He's the first and the last. وَالظَّاهِرُ And He is the, the obvious one. There is no more, a, there's no reality more obvious than Allah Himself. That is the ultimate reality. He is the ultimate reality. وَالْبَاطِنُ And there is no great entity, no greater entity hidden than Allah Himself. He is the most obvious and the most hidden at the same time. The one who re- observes Allah's creation and reflects with the mind that Allah has given them, it will become, you know, this will be the most obvious reality that's, that's ever been there for them. The scary reality this ayah reveals is that we're never alone. Of course, Allah Azza wa Jalla is witness all the time. But even beyond that, the angels have been assigned for each of us. We are never, ever, ever alone. That doesn't exist for us. In kullu nafsil lamma alayha hafil. And then we should note that this phrase has a lot, is a great degree of emphasis in it. Don't ever lose sight of the fact that it is absolutely true that every single person, all times of you know of all hours of all days, has a watcher over them, has a guardian over them. Some discourse that we should t- uh, take into consideration in regards to this ayah. First of all, we find a hadith in regards to the other kind of angels, the ones that protect. Allah says in the hadith, uh, or the Messenger says in the hadith, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Inna Allah wakkala bil rahimi malaka." Allah has installed even in the wombs angels. He has appointed angels to guard and protect even in the wombs. 
from that time we are not alone and, for, uh, and then forth the other thing hifd huwa ri'aya alladhi yura'i al-mahfuz this word hafiz me uh, comes from hifd which is protection that which is offered to the one that is being protected in other words these angels in this case we said they're not protecting us necessarily they're protecting the information all of our deeds they're guarding all of our actions and our, our behaviors so all of them are thoroughly recorded now the second thing that I should note here is why use the word kul and not use the word jami'a. You see the ayah says in kullu nafsin. And in the Quran, jami'a is also used. Now jami'a, kul means every, and jami'a means all, all together. So what's the difference between them? You see, if you use the word jami'a, it implies that the people are together. And only then they have a guardian over them. But kul means each and every one in their own individual place. It, regardless of whether we're together or not, this is something that's, that's taking place. The other thing here is, the word alayha proceeding. In other words, Allah does not say in kullu nafsin lamma hafidun alayha. Alayha is not at the end, alayha is in the middle. This is what's called taqdeem. The benefit of knowing that is that every one of us has specifically been assigned an angel. Or specifically been assigned a hafid that is for us. That's their job. Their job is us. As opposed to some other person, they have another angel assigned to them, and it's very, very particular to every single human being. This is part of the qadr and the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other thing we should note about this ayah is the use of the word nafs, as opposed to the word insan. Allah does not say, in kullu insanin lamma alayha hafid. He says, in kullu nafsin. <coughs> Interestingly, in the next ayah we'll, we'll find, فَلْيَنْظُرِ nafs أَوْ فَلْيَنْظُرِ insan مِمَّا خُلِقْ You find insan in the next ayah. But in the previous ayah, we find the word nafs. So two different words are being used for the person, for the human being. What's the benefit in knowing this? So the word nafs is associated with that which is inside of us. The word insan is of course the whole human being, but the word alludes to more of forgetfulness, because it comes from nasiya. So its theme has to do with forgetfulness. And we'll see how that applies in the next ayah. But this is about secrecy, because the nafs thinks they, they, they have some things that can keep a secret, that nobody's gonna find out. But Allah says, no, you have a guardian over you. Even that nafs that is known for keeping secrets, none of its secrets are safe because there's a hafid. And then the, in their company, there are going to be those shy spouses that keep lowering their eyes and sit next to them. Atrab that are is similar, they're compatible. Just because she's beautiful, doesn't mean she has a good personality. She could be a monster. You can hate her guts. Just because she's pretty doesn't mean anything. They have to be atrab. They're the same age as you. They're compatible with you. They like what you like. They don't like what you don't like. They are, they're a perfect fit. They're a perfect fit. And that's sometimes not possible in this world. Even among Sahaba. There's, there's no compatibility sometimes. What story do we read about lack of compatibility? Zayd bin Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anhumah. There's no compatibility. That's okay. Jannah, total and absolute compatibility. And it's not artificial compatibility. You know, they make all these movies about relationships and soap operas and comedies and this and that. When they first meet each other, everything is perfect and things start going sour after a while, right? Well, in Jannah, you're with this lady forever. Forever. Ever, you ever seen the Lockhorns? You guys don't read newspapers, right? So, I don't know. Lockhorns is an old comic. It's an old comic script. Strip. And they're old husband and wife. And they're always sarcastic with each other. It's really funny stuff. But the point of all of it is, when you spend a lifetime together, you get on each other's nerves. You start saying stuff to each other, you can like, how could you say that? Like your parents do that. Your, your grandparents do that, they talk to each other like, oh my God, how could you just say that? Yeah, chara yaar, it's all good. I can say it, I've been with her 70 years. She can take it, and she'll respond, she'll fire back with another one. <laughs> you know? So this, this is the opposite of atrab. They've learned to deal with each other. They roll with the punches. But they're atrab. Everything is in compatibility. Everything is smooth. هَذَا مَا تُعَدُونَ لِيَوْمِ الْحِسَابِ This is what you were promised for the day of, of resurrection, the day of accounting. إِنَّ هَذَا لَرِزْقُنَا مَا لَهُ مِنْ نَفَادِ This is our provision. It does not have any end to it, any expiration to it whatsoever. Remember the word nafada? قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّي لَا نَفِدَ الْبَحَرْ قَبْلَ أَن تَنْفَدَ كَلِمَاتُ رَبِّي Tell them if the oceans were turned into ink to write the words of my master, the oceans would run dry. They would run out, they would expire. نَفَاد The mustar of it. There is no expiration on this rizq. هَذَا Enjoy all of this. 
This is sometimes in Quran Allah does that. Hada. That's it. That's the stuff. That should hit the spot. And for the rebellious, the worst possible place to go back to. Jahannam yaslawnaha. Jahannam they'll be thrown into. Fabiqsal mihad. What a horrible cradle that hugs them it is. Hada. Take it then. Falyadukuhu. Then they should taste it. Hamimun wa ghassaqun. Taste what? It's a new sentence actually because it's marfu'a again. It's like there's istighnaf. What should they taste? And just like the taste doesn't go down the throat, the sentence cuts and goes, starts over again. And what is it? Hameem actually means boiling hot water. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.